Hi, I'm Darren. These are my hands, and these are some pictures of Gru the Wanderer and a certain dragon on GruTube, where we appreciate the art of Aragonez. Well, hello, Gru friends. Today, I want to take a close look at the cover of Epic Gru number two from April of 1985. You see, this has long been one of my very favorite Gru the Wanderer covers, and I have just recently acquired this promotional poster which features the same artwork on it. So I thought, hey, let's take a look at this wonderful art of Sergio Aragonez. I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second so we can concentrate on the cover for a bit. Then we'll come back to the poster. And maybe I'll even slide over here so we can put a slightly larger version or maybe some details over on the right side. Now let me tell you a little story about my copy of Gru number two. I started collecting Gru right around the time when it started being published by Epic Comics. I was in high school at the time. I started collecting Gru. I very quickly got the Pacific Comics back issues. And if I didn't start with Gru number one or Gru number two, I started very close. Now, at some point after I graduated from university, I went into a bit of a dark Gru period. I wasn't collecting Gru comics. I didn't collect any of the cool stuff that came out in the mid to late 90s. And while I was getting rid of many things from my youth, I got rid of my Gru collection. But I don't remember getting rid of my Gru collection. And when I came back from going away to school, I couldn't find my Gru comics. And then in the spring of 2020, my good friend Robin popped over to my house at a safe distance and brought a box of stuff that he found in his basement that he was sure belonged to me. And in that box were my Gru comics from way back in high school and university. And I was very, very excited to have them back. A few years prior to that, I had started collecting Gru again. And on a trip down to Toronto, I met a fella in the Canadian Tire parking lot and I bought issues 1 through 50 from him for $50 Canadian. My two young boys enjoyed the road trip that we were on. They read lots and lots of Gru comics in the back seat, but I was disappointed that I didn't have my original copies until Robin brought them over that day. But missing from my original collection was Gru number 2. I had my Pacific Comics 1 through 8. I had issue number 1 going way up to when I stopped collecting, but no Gru number 2, which is very strange. Here are some of my originals, and you can see Canadian price variants, right? I bought them locally at my comic shop. This one's not a Canadian price variant. This one is. So is number 5 but not number six, but number seven is. I don't know what was going on with my local comic book shop, whether he always got the Canadian price variants or sometimes did, or maybe I started collecting later on in 1985 and I had to pick up a couple of these back issues and the bins didn't have the Canadian price variants. I'm not sure, but all of these comics right here are my original bagged and boarded collection from when I was in high school. Anyway, all that to say, this copy of Gru number two is not a Canadian price variant. Almost certain that it wasn't in my original collection of Gru. And as such, it's a little bit special to me because of all of that. And it's just a fantastic cover. So on the cover, we have Gru about to attack this, perhaps he thinks it's a snake, winding its way through the reeds and the grasses. He's tippy-toeing up, sneaking up on it, his katana drawn. He's about to slay, not realizing that this is no snake. This is the tail of a giant dragon who sees Gru and seems very capable of defending himself. When I look at the art on this cover, I am struck by all the detail that's going on in the dragon, especially his scales 
his scaly skin and the plates going up his back, the ruffle around his head, the little tenderly things dangling from him. I look at Gru, and I look at his feet here, and I think, oh man, those are like Sergio shortcut drawing feet. The amount of attention and detail he put into these toes and this heel and ankle doesn't seem to match what's going on with the dragon. One of my absolute favorite parts of this drawing is Gru's nose. In particular, the shading of Gru's nose. It's not hatched, and you can't tell as well on this cover as you can on the poster, so we'll look at that later. But just kind of the squiggly lines that Sergio uses to indicate the shadow there. I love that. I think that's just fantastic. So we have a funny gag, an amusing gag. It, it stands out on its own. It's something that you would see on the newsstand and you'd say, hey, I'll buy that comic. It's self-contained, right? The Colors by Tom Luth, absolutely gorgeous. Nice and bright yellows at the top, orange down through red at the bottom. The shading on the dragon, the light greens, the dark greens, the bluey greens. In the shadows down here, the browns used on some of the scales on the dragon's skin and his neck and belly. Underneath his tail here. This really is a work of art. Something I think any Guru collector or fan would be happy to have displayed. Hey, even looking at the colors of the title... The blue complementary with the yellow in the background, the pinky purple on the banner, and then we've got the corner box here. It's not funny because Gru's doing something stupid. It's funny because Gru is stupid. He's just roasting his, I don't know what this is, some sort of bird. Over his fire, the color and the shading makes it look beautiful. You know that I'm a sucker for fire and how Tom and Sergio work together with colors and shading and hatching just to do those highlights and shadows with flames, with torches, that sort of thing. I think it looks great. Gru looks dumb. He's just eyeing up that chicken. His tongue is sticking out. He's sniffing, and it's smelling good. It's just a dumb-looking picture of Gru. Not that it's a bad picture of Gru. Gru just looks dumb, and it's funny because of that. Love it. And of course, the colors work in so well with the rest of the cover. And actually, I wonder, see these marks behind Gru here? Maybe he's leaning up against a tree or a rock or something. Maybe that's the leg of some sort of beast. Like, maybe there's like a giant chicken behind him. And that's the chicken's beefy thigh or something like that. Wouldn't that be interesting if this was part of a, a larger gag? Or if there was a gag that... Sergio had in mind for this, but we just don't get to see it, so we imagine maybe there's a gigantic chicken behind Gru. It certainly would fit in with the gigantic dragon behind Gru here on the cover. Gru thinks he's about to strike at a snake, but it's really a dragon. And then up here in the corner box, Gru's about to enjoy a chicken dinner, and there's this giant chicken behind him. I don't know. Who knows? Fun to think about. Let's bring in the poster now. And what I've done here is I've got a nice piece of glass just to kind of keep things flat. There might be a little bit of a glare, but hopefully not too much. And I think that will help us to, to see the poster flat, even if there's a little bit of a trade-off there. So we have the cover of Gru number two blown up. It's probably about one and a half times size here. And we just get a closer look at some of the details from the cover. And let's go back to the nose. Let's start right here with the nose. Remember how I mentioned earlier about the squiggly lines and such? Look at that. You can just see the detail here. Line, 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 squiggly, squiggly, dot, dot, dot. I don't know how to properly appreciate this, but I do know that I appreciate that. And I really think that it's just a great job of adding some shade. I like how Tom, I presume it's Tom colored this, recolored this, is actually doing something different with the highlights. It looks like the highlights are coming this way on the original cover, but on the poster, 
they almost seem to be coming from behind. And so we've got Gru's nose, the front of Gru's nose, in a bit of shadow here, and the bottom, of course, in some shadow. We can see the highlights on the back of Gru's arms here. So a little bit of an indication of a change of light source. You know, the shadows coming this way on the dragon up here. We don't see those shadows up top here. A little bit of a shadow behind there and there. But I love that nose. I love the shadow that's added in here. We really get a look at that cheap foot down here. Not that we're complaining, just noticing. But look at the fine line work of all the scales on the dragon's skin. Look at the plates going up the spine of the dragon. We see more of the detail. We can see the hatching and the shading and the pen work that's used to give that depth and dimensionality to the dragon. Wonderful work up here. Some of his blemishes and bulbous bits stick out a little bit more because we've got that much more detail to look at. And looking here at the tendrils and stuff, we can see that rounded shape that we don't see as much of because of the, the size of the cover version of this compared to the poster version. Looks really nice. A little bit different coloring. We don't see the browns on the chest here, a little bit on the leg but not so much on the head. And while we're thinking about color, you know, Gru's jerkin seems pretty much right on there. His little blue Walkman seems pretty much right on. The redness of the gauntlets seems to be deeper, darker in the poster version as opposed to the cover version. Darker grays on the sheaths for Gru's katana on the cover as opposed to Almost this putty color, very similar to the knife sheath on the poster version. The title block is moved centered above the action here. Maybe it's made a little bit larger, and obviously the color is a little bit different. It doesn't need to be blue to be complementary with the yellow background here. We've just kind of got the Gru orange going on. And let me just bring this down a bit so we can read. He's fearsome, he's fearless, he's state-of-the-art barbarian, and now he's available monthly from Epic Comics. Sergio Aragonez grew the wanderer, fighting to make the world safe for cheese dip. On sale in December from Marvel Epic Comics, wherever comics are sold. So this here, grew the wanderer, trademark and copyright, 1984, Sergio Aragonés. And again, the Epic and Marvel copyright is 1984. So this poster, taking the cover artwork from issue number two, released probably in the fall of 1984. And when I say released, this is a promotional comic. It was given to comic book stores. This was not something that, as a Gru collector, we could buy. In fact, not to be sold, right on the side there. You might have seen this up at your local comic book shop if you were shopping in the early 80s and think, okay, I am interested in this funny barbarian comic. I will check it out in December when the first issue comes out. So, beautiful cover. We love it. I hope you love it as much as I do. I wanted to pop out this one too. As I was just looking through comics, this one caught my eye as well. Not the least of because it features prominently a dragon on the cover behind Gru. Yeah, there's Arcadio too. And Gru seems to be totally oblivious to it, just like in Epic number two. Now, wouldn't it have been awesome if this was the same dragon. Now, I don't think it is because, you know, we take a look at all the little spiky bits and the frills around the dragon head. They don't seem to be the same. He's got more of these little noodly bits coming from his chin and on top of his head that we don't see here on the original dragon. Lots more teeth as well, not just the single fang here and here, right? So different dragon, but still kind of the same vibe happening here. And even the yellow background, right? Here and here. It draws parallels. It makes me think. It reminds me of issue number two. Now, of course, 
I'm not going to spoil friends and foes for you, but there is a dragon thread that kind of weaves through friends and foes. Some of you haven't had the opportunity to read friends and foes yet. Highly encourage you to pick it up if you can find it somewhere. Perhaps some of the best grew to come out in the last 10, 15 years. Really good stuff. And of course, an excellent cover here. One last thing I'd like to take a look at with you. That poster's going on the wall. I'm gonna get it framed. See you later, friends and foes. Okay. For your consideration, no comment on the background of this image, other than to say a Gru fan obtained this drawing based on the cover of Gru number two. It is an homage to the cover. It's not drawn by Sergio. This is just something for us to take a look at because this is one of my favorite covers. Now for me, it was neat to see how the artist interpreted the cover in that he wasn't using color to express tone and shade. He was totally reliant on pen work, on, on drawing in this hatching to show the shading where Sergio had Tom to color his original comic. So it's interesting to see, you know, the shading on the dragon here. Interesting to see how he uses shading to bring in volume and shape to Gru on his arms, on his body. There's your nose. Same thing there. It's a pretty faithful copy of the cover. You know, the flame is out of the corner box here and so is the stick. And, and that's kind of neat, actually. The comic code authority box is kind of pushed to the side. This might be interesting to see. I have overlaid this black and white copy over the original cover for you to see how closely they match up. And you can see they do match up very well but not totally exactly. While the outline of this copy remains very true to the outline, to the contours of the original, and most of the important bits of the drawing line up very closely, there may have been slight tweaks to the inner workings. I was curious to see this because did the artist just like trace this? When I look at it, it's like, yeah, this is pretty faithful to Sergio's drawing of group. At the same time, I do notice differences. Like, take a look at the hair here. Instead of stringy bits, you know, he's he's coloring it and inking it in. And even the, the shape of the hair, you know, kind of curving back in on itself down here, whether where it splays over on this side. You know, so some changes. As a fan of Sergio's work, it's interesting to look at a copy because it helps at least it helps me to understand how Sergio may have drawn the original when we see how another artist attempts to make the same thing. Really interesting stuff, I think. Do you remember seeing this poster back in 1984, 1985? Did you manage to get your hands on a copy back in the day? Or maybe you have in the years since? I can tell you, I am very pleased to have this now. And now that I've shown it to you, I'm going to get myself a nice frame, stick it up in the wall of my office here. Absolutely inspiring artwork from Sergio Aragonez. I hope you enjoyed it today. I hope that you will give this video a like, maybe leave a comment below, but please make sure that you are subscribed to GruTube and that you have notifications turned on because I will be back soon with another video and I don't want you to miss out. Take care, everybody. Oh, Gru, you're such an idiot.